Well, Matt Tibbins here, Timberwolf Favorite Processing Equipment. It's the 10th day of July. Hot as hell out here, but we got an MPXL in the gray conveyor. And I thought before we ship this off to, he's going to Illinois. Is that right? Yeah. Before we ship to Illinois, do a walkthrough and uh, show you, you know, what to look for when you receive your machine and kind of like your daily maintenance parts on the uh, machine. So let's start with grease because grease is real important. That's what's on this stick here. So all these bearings, they got grease certs on the underside. Grease certs there, grease certs there. So that's one, two, three, four, five bearings. And then you got two bearings up front here. With grease certs, you can stick the grease gun right through here. And there's grease certs there. Now those, they come grease from the factory. You don't want to put so much grease that they blow out. So we really only recommend you check that grease every about 40 hours. And don't push too hard with your grease gun. You should not see grease coming out of them. If you push too hard, you're going to blow those seals and they'll be eating grease all the time. So that's the first thing to look for. So you get your grease certs on these bearings. Uh, next, grease cylinder. This pin here, put grease in there. Again, we grease this, grease that at the factory. That doesn't need a lot of grease. It just helps down the road if you ever got to change your cylinder out. Keeping that grease prevent that from rusting up. Most important grease certs, they're on the push block. So a good trick to do is you run your push block forward and you can access the two through this hole here. And then on the other side, access the two from this hole here and that puts grease on the slide of the beam that's most the heaviest wear area if you have the conveyor option it takes the same bearings as the live deck there's six more one two three double on the other side same thing goes there you don't want to blow that seal and put grease on them so keep an eye out for that all right other grease points top row slide you got two on each side to keep grease on that beam and then same thing with these two bearings up here. You don't want to blow that seal up. Saw arbor arm. You've got a grease cert right in there. That should be a daily grease as long as well as the push block slider there. So every eight hours, very important, put grease in there. And you can access that right from up here. All right. So that takes care of our grease points on the machine. Other than your hubs, your hubs standard trailer procedure. You know, it's good to keep them full of grease even if you're not going down the road off and keep the moisture and dust out of there. Yeah, that's the grease. Let's start with the engine. Engine, you got an oil filter up here. This is a 38 horsepower Kohler fuel injected engine. Oil filter. And then to change the oil, you got a drain bung right there. Our transfer case. There's no grease prints on the transfer case. You don't need to worry about it. So, first thing you gotta do with the machine to set it up, the live deck has the safety catch up here. So, take this pin off. There it goes. And we'll fire up the machine. Really, there's no choke or anything. I still like to serve about 20% throttle. <laughs> took the pins off and the safety bracket off of the live deck. I lowered it down and they got the legs leveled up. 
I like to let, run it pretty perfectly level. Some guys like to run a little downhill, some guys a little uphill. Doesn't really make a difference up to you. I prefer it perfectly level. So before we go up and running, you want to check this is your hydraulic tank. This is where it fills from. And you got your filler sight gauge right here. You want to make sure that that's full before you run so you don't cavitate your pump. Uh, those are your suction lines going there. Uh, the next thing we're going to do, before I fire it up, we're going to deploy the conveyor. So the conveyor is right here. It sits back on these guys here, so it rests there with gravity. Uh, there's no no safety chains or anything needed to be uh, taken off to run it. So we're going to fire it up, and I'll show you how to set that down. All right, so now the machine is uh, pretty much ready to go. It's got stabilizer jacks on the four corners. You can set them up. If you're gonna run all day, recommend it. Uh, but you don't have to, no requirement. You can see even with the conveyor deployed, it's still perfectly stable. Since we're only gonna run a few logs through here, we're not gonna worry about doing that. All right, so now, how do you run this thing? Really pretty straightforward. A couple of things to pay attention to before I have the loud engine on, I'll go over these. This is your bar oil pump. This valve here controls the amount of bar oil that's going through. So when it's all the way up, there's no restriction. It's wide open. You're going to send a lot of bar oil onto that uh, saw. Here, it's all the way closed. Nothing comes through. It's really operator preference. You obviously don't want to starve bar oil, but you also don't want to waste bar oil. I find the colder it gets, the farther you got to open it up. Day like today, 90 odd degrees. Probably have about 20% cracked right there. But again, I'm gonna judge that when I first start up. I'm gonna make sure I can see a little bit of bar rail coming out. On top here is the emergency stop, but this is for if something bad were to happen while you're operating, you blow a line, something goes bad, you whack that engine dies. If you leave it whacked, you can't start the thing. So make sure you pull it back up. It will not start until you fire up the key. So that's what you got going on there. You got three gauges here, they're pressure gauges. The first gauge, it says saw. What's that do? It tells you the pressure of your saw motor. Maximum pressure should be 2,650 warm. So if it's a cold day, you might actually start off with a slightly higher bar pressure, not to worry. As the fluid warms up, it'll go back to where it's supposed to be set. But if it's warm and you're seeing pressures above 2,650, you need to adjust that, because that's not good for the pump. Every once in a while, these pressure leaks come out of adjustment. This is your bar. This dictates how hard that bar presses into the log. You want to see that between 150 and 200 PSI. Again, that's kind of adjustable to your preference. The higher the pressure, the more you're going to have to float the bar valve in order to not stall out the saw. We try to aim have, you know, 150, 200 from the factory. Splitter auto cycle. This here, that is the pressure that's going to your splitting ram. So this machine here, this is a five inch cylinder. It should generate right about 3,000 PSI, 2,850 to 3,000 is what you should see there. Anything above 3,000 is no good. You know, uh, none of the pumps or valves are rated for over 3,000. Uh, below, you can adjust your pressure relief, this guy right here, and increase that till you see right about 3,000 or your engine stalls. At higher elevation, sometimes your engine won't have the power to build 3,000. Don't be alarmed, it's just oxygen. That's what makes gas engines run. So, that's your valve way up there, or your gauge lay out there you got your valves saw wedge lift live deck feed trough splitter auto cycle clamp and bar conveyor drive with this valve underneath here so what's all that mean that turns your saw motor on this nifty little switch here tells the bar oil pump that your saw motor's on and uh, start pumping bar oil so when you have your saw off that switch is depressed tells that not to pump so you're not wasting oil all the time wedge lift Lifts the wedge up and down six inches. Uh, you know, you can try to find this on your log or you can just leave it set, really up to you. Live deck, that's gonna bring your log into the trough. So you pull this down, log comes into the trough. You push it backwards, the log will back up a little bit. Feed trough, you pull it down. The feed trough chain is gonna activate pulling forward and your top roll drive is gonna activate working in conjunction to pull it forward. Push it away from you, everything's gonna go backwards. Splitter auto cycle, you can use this in two fashions. You can use it basically manual, like that. So this will let it go forward and split, and then that'll make it go backwards. Or you can just do it auto. 
bolt both down. It'll stay in detent until it hits the end of stroke or about 1500 PSI, at which point it'll automatically pop up like that, sending the cylinder back again until it hits end of stroke or about 1500 PSI, and then it will stop by itself. What's that allow you to do? That allows you to cut, drop the log, hit this, while the splitter's doing its work, you work on the next valve, pull your log forward and cut it. Once you get good, like I am, you'll be able to time that block, drop it right in there without skipping a beat. Boom. Okay. Clamp. Down. Up. Or I'm sorry, down. Up. Float. So, most of the time, you want to run it in float, up here. So the weight of that whole contraption is going on the log and it's helping it feed it through and that's about 200 pounds so that's also enough weight to hold the log acting as a log dog for saw if you get a real gnarly piece that's getting hung up a little bit doesn't happen often but when it does you press down and that'll put up to a thousand pounds of downforce biting these teeth right in the log sucking that log through so most of the time you want to run it in float bigger logs at the last cut what I like to do is I leave it in float, I bring it out until I have my desired length behind, then I'm gonna lock it down, put some down pressure on, make sure it's nice and snug, that also will pull a droop up, get a nice square cut, cut it, drop it, then put it in float, and then roll your feed trough forward. It's important to not uh, leave it locked with your feed trough rolling forward. What do I mean by locked? In the neutral position. So if you go down and apply pressure on it, and then you put it in the neutral position. Now there's no way for that cylinder to move up and down. So as you move that forward, if there's a knot and it tries to lift up, it puts an excessive amount of force on the whole system. So you can run it with down pressure and pulling it forward. And because that valve is open, it can only do system pressure and that's fine, that's recommended. But as soon as you get to that next cut, put her back and float so you don't forget. And then finally, your bar. This is probably the valve you'll get most familiar with because this valve here the harder you pull that down the faster that bar comes through the log and you're going to see that you know the way this machine's set up we don't have it set up going at one slow speed with that bar it's set up to be variable so if there's no logs there you can slam on it go really fast if it's a small log you can move down to the cut slow and then it's up to the operator with his skill to kind of feather it through that log so that you're not going to stall out your saw motor or break things so Sounds a little bit complicated, but you really, you know, you can look at your pressures, you know, at 2650, your bar is going to stall out or your uh, saw motor is going to stall out, or you can just do it by ear like I do now because I've been running these things for so damn long, but you'll get the hang of that. So that's your main valves down here, conveyor, forward, backwards detent. So what I like to do is just fire it up, put it in forward. If a block that's too big goes up there, it can stop it, bring it back and re-split. And uh, I really think that's about all on the operation this one's got a six-way wedge in it you can also do a four-way we're gonna run some logs through it you can kind of watch me run those valves and make sense of what i just said uh yeah other than that oh we forgot to talk about bar tension real important so let's go over on this side here easy access you see i can stand right in here open up this door a little magnet up there keeps it closed pretty cool so we got our bar here it's a 404 82 link chain oregon product with 12 2 sprocket down here what tension do you want to see? So as hard as I can pull, I don't want to be able to remove the teeth from there. So if you look here, I'm pulling pretty hard and see how the teeth are still in the bar. That's about where you want it to be. So right now it's brand new, it's never been run before except for a few spins. So it's there. After I run normally, you know, 45 minutes or so, I'm going to stop and then check that tension. You'll see it's going to slacken up some, you know, as all, uh, bushings and stuff wear in the chain gets a little longer what do you do at that point there you loosen these two bolts here loosen your jam nut this is a 7 16 or sorry these are 7 8 and this is a 7 16 wrench once you loosen these up loosen that jam nut you tighten that forward get it to the desired tension checking this way now watch it he's been running for 45 minutes it's going to be hot so use gloves for god's sakes once it's done like that tighten these back up make sure those are good and snug then you're good to go boom Life's great, you're back to splitting. So, pretty straightforward. That's how you run a uh, Pro MP XL. Uh, real simple machine, easy to work on. As I said before, in my opinion, best value in the industry. Uh, give us a call if you'd like to buy one or one of our dealers. And uh, other than that, let's split some goddamn wood.